Hello, bruv. I've got some books, lots of books actually, but let's start with the Wagner Gatterdammerung, the edition Peters. Peters. Dritter Tag Gatterdammerung. The Latsy Tell Das Ringes. Know what any of this any of this bullshit means? It's pretty cool though. Uh, it's a nice little page, bruv. It's just sheet music. Lots of sheet music, bruv. Not sure what year in this is from. 1876, maybe. Doubt it, but who knows? Maybe it is. Anyway, that's a nice tear in it. Village of Secrets, Caroline Moorhead, Defying the Nazis in Vichy, France. Rats in a trap. Seems to be an unlimited amount of books. Related to Nazis and people who fought them or people who lived through the concentration camps and most of them. I bought this because it was 30 cents, half off. Otherwise, I'd, I'm almost not inclined to pick them up anymore. This book, I believe I already have, but I scanned it into me Libib, Libib catalog, of which I have 15, 1,600. <laughs> back away books. Minimum. And it didn't show up, so I grabbed it. Tale of Menace, Madness, Medicine, and the Murder of a President. I think it's McKinley, right? No, James Garfield. Pimpology. Paid 95 cents for this, but... Pimp and Ken. <laughs> the fuck? Pimp and Ken will teach you some shit. Shit if she ain't, I said. Man, she was looking at you so hard, I started to wipe her eyeballs off your forehead with this napkin. He laughed and said, you were fly as hell for a young pimp. We pulled off. By the time we got to the corner, the hoe was waving Aquarius down. He told her to get in the back seat, and then he drilled and like... Drilled the hole like a drill sergeant. Bitch, what's your pimp's number so I can call him and serve him? How many kids do you have? What's your mama's name? Have you ever been with another woman? Have you ever stashed money on your pimp? What's the most money you ever made at one time? Can you can you get along with other hoes? Aquarius asked that hoe 101 questions. After he broke her, he served her pimp. He served her pimp and put her back down on track. It must be served as her pimp. We pulled off, and the lesson began. Young dog, a hoe will wreck a stable in a minute. <laughs> he said, I asked her all those questions to try to get a feel for her. Is she jealous? How does she feel about her mama? If she doesn't love her mama or her kids, a pimp or another hoe doesn't stand a chance. When I asked her the most money she made, I asked, that so I could see her response. I can look into her eyes and see if her eyes get big. See if she has as a love for money. If she likes money, I will put her with my top money, making hoe, and they can battle it out to see who can bring in the most. 
The more questions you ask a hoe, the more she talks. The more she talks, the more you find out if she can fit in with your other hoes. And if she fits with your pimping. I had to give it to Aquarius. He knew how to keep his hoes under control. As I got deeper in the game, I was able to ex execute the valuable game that I got from him. From him. If I screened a hoe and she was a problem hoe, I separated her from the good ones. I may not have gotten rid of her, but I definitely did not allow her to mess up my stable. That's how you take care of hoes, buddy. Jack the Ripper. The complete history of Jack the Ripper. This is indeed the definitive account by Dan Farson. No, by Philip Sugden. Oh, not very good shape. Neither is her face. I wonder if he killed some hoes. Body of Mary Kelly is discovered in Miller's Court. That's pretty graphic. I think I have about six or seven. Six or seven books on Jack the Ripper, and I don't think I've ever read even a page. Nineteen sixty chew ventures into Michigan's thumb area, thumb diggings by Neva Neva Dumond. As you can imagine, view of the Maxine Theater at Croswell. Another scene of the Croswell Centennial Activities, old time apparel and courtesy. I don't know a squat about the thumb area, so might come in handy at some point. Since Gundella the Witch was from there. True Vine, I picked this up from my me mother. Two brothers are kidnapping in a mother's quest. A true story of the Jim Crow South. This story is pretty fucked up. Where is it? Tell the story. A true story of two African American brothers who were kidnapped and displayed as circus freaks and whose mother endured a decades long struggle to find them and to get justice for her family. The year was 1899, as the old people told the story. The place, a sweltering tobacco community in the Jim Crow South called Truvine, where everyone they knew was either a former slave or a child or grandchild of slaves. <sighs> Though the narrative of George and Willie Muse has been passed down for over a century, no writer has ever gotten this close to the beating heart of their story and its mysteries. Were they really kidnapped and put into servitude by the circus? How did their mother, a black maid toiling under the harsh restrictions of segregation, bring them home? And why, after getting there, would they ever want to go back? At the height of their fame, the Muse brothers performed for British royalty and headlined more than a dozen sold-out shows at New York's Madison Square Garden. They were fine musicians and global superstars in a pre-broadcast era, but the very root of their success hinged on the color of their skin and the outrageous caricatures they were forced to assume cannibals Sheep-headed freaks, even ambassadors from Mars. Figured my mother would like that, but I got it. Because it's an interesting story as well. I've never heard of anything like it. I figured they were murdered, but 
they were apparently sideshow circus f turned into side so I can't even talk sideshow circus performers they must have liked it because it seems like they wanted to go back and probably did This one, Blue Highways, A Journey into America by William Least, Heat Moon. Seems interesting enough. It's basically a story, the translation of the tribal name in his mixed blood. Lost his job in a college in Missouri. He got a half-ton Ford van, packed a few necessaries, including leaves of, leaves of grass and Nyhart's Black Elk Speaks, and set out to follow the track of various ancestors and write a book about America. The book is called Blue Highways, and it is a masterpiece. For the most part, Lee's Heat Moon was exploring the unsung side of America, where, to paraphrase Kipling, the lab and plaster are not smoothed off. Little post office towns like Nameless Tennessee or Looking Glass, Oregon. The Cajun country of Louisiana and the Drumlin Hill near Palmyra, New York. Where long ago the angel Moroni spoke apocalyptic, apocalyptically to the young Joseph Smith and changed history. It's pretty interesting. And long. Big fat cat. Angelic days. Neon Genesis and Evangelium. This is for me, child. Who apparently likes this series. I've never heard of it before. But this is the second book I found, and said child will get it. Some crackers, bruv. Radio Man. From a world war to a world series. I loved working with Stilts for a lot of reasons. His humor, his friendship, his tolerance, but most of all, his dedication to making Tiger Brass broadcasts sound great. What was the uh, radio engineer? Go Tigers to Linda number two. Good luck and best wishes from Howard Stitzel. Anyway, he's going to my Tigers collection. This is E. Cummings Poems. I've probably got this book already, but I'll always pick up my favorite artists. My favorite authors and artists. Derbies with men in them smoke Helmar cigarettes. Play ga backgammon. Three watch uh, has gold teeth. B pink suspenders. C reads Atlantis. X and Y play. B cries Effendi. Uh, coffee. Uh, enter paperboy. C buys Boston American. Exit paperboy. A finishes Helmar. Lights another. X and Y play. FND approaches, sets down coffee, withdraws. A and C discuss news in Turkish. X and Y play. B spits. X and Y play. B starts Armenian record. Phonograph is running down. Phonograph stops. B swears in Persian at phonograph. X wins. X win. X by C. Good night. FND, five men in derbies. It's just like a coffin's inside when you die, pretentious and shiny and not too wide. Dear God, there's a portrait over the 
the door, very notable of the sultan's nose, pullable and rosy, flanked by the scrumptious Magdalene of who is it, and Madame something by Gainsborough, just the playthings for dust, Nias, Sipa, Effendi drifts between tables like an old leaf between toadstools. He is the cheerfulest of men. His peaked head smolders like a new turd in April. His legs are brittle and small, his feet large and fragile, his queer hands twitter before him like foolish butterflies. He is the most courteous of men. Should you remark the walls have been repapered, he will nod like Buddha or answer modestly, I am dying. So let us come in together and drink coffee covered with froth, half mud, and not too sweet. That's not the typical Cummings poem, but this is more experimental stuff. What year was this? This before or after his death? 61, no, 63, 65. Those were after his death. Yeah. Impolitic, impolitic bodies, poetry, saints, and society in 15th century England, the work of Osborne Bockenham. Never heard of him, but the book was too good of a, too good sounding to pass up. An ardent Yorkist on the eve of the Wars of the Roses and a gifted poet, Sheila Delaney focuses on manuscript written in 1447, The Legend of Holy Women, narrating the lives and ordeals of 13 heroic and powerful saints. This was the first all-female legendary in English, much of it commissioned by wealthy women patrons. In the vicinity of Clare Priory, Suffolk, where Bokemon, Bokenham lived, Very interesting. I've got some Janet Ivanovich books only, as you can see, because they are signed. If I can sell them together for about 30 or 40 bucks, that'd be great. Since I only paid 15 or 15 bucks, 50 cents a piece for these, so a buck 50 total. Got the weirdest, weirdest signature. It almost looks machine printed, but I'm guessing it's real. Plum spooky. Hard eight. Once again, signed. Hopefully I can get something for those. If not, I'll still get something for I'll keep them then, probably. Bill Bryson, A Short History of Nearly Everything. Never looked at this book. I've had it a few times. Surprised they have not. Don't have a copy of this. Thought I, no, that's right. I keep finding, I sold them. The last copy I had, and then most of the copies I have found have been in not good shape, so I didn't buy them. Not that I've ever read Bill Bryson, but he used to be a pretty good seller back when I was selling more books. Jordan Peterson, Savage Messiah, How Dr. Jordan Peterson is Saving Western Civilization by Jim Prosser. Relatively new book. <laughs> Relatively new book. 2019. Oh, I will sell it if it's worth anything. No, people hate Jordan Peterson. <laughs> I actually like him, but. Some people don't. Hey, watch me rip off a sticker. Yeah. 
Very interesting, bruv. Rip off a sticker with me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's gonna get crazy here, buddy. Let's see if I... No, I don't want to go to lie, baby. Let's bring these two over that I bought the other day. I witness to the gods what I kept secret for decades by Eric Von Daniken. Bought these yesterday. Obviously, he's the one who wrote the... What's that famous book? Chariots of the Gods. And this is apparently the stuff he kept secret because it was too, too, too crazy to be published at the time. This is an images of aviation, an images of America book, which are basically filled with historical photos from local places. And they do these for every, basically every small city in America. And Willow Run is in Ypsilanti. I actually have some old video footage of this place from back from the 40s, maybe earlier. Although my my video, whatever it's called, old video player started eating it, so I haven't messed with it since. <clears throat> Junkie by William S. Burroughs. I could see a fat old Jewish doctor trying to refuse Maddie a shot on credit. Characters like Maddie constitute one of the hazards of pushing. They usually have money when they don't they expect credit. If you refuse, they will try to strong arm you. They won't listen to Listen. Burroughs wasn't very good. I did like his spoken word thing where he's just like, Ass, as not. Whatever the hell he was talking about. I can't think of the quotes. In fact, the whole thing. Whatever he said, I can't recall it, but yeah. Still collect them, but I prefer to get the originals, but I will take the 50 cent trade off for a paperback any day. Dave Eggers. Eggers. You'll, you shall know our velocity, author of heartbreaking work of staggering genius. I literally have no clue what this guy writes, though I have maybe five or six of his books. I don't know if it's memoir, fiction, what it is. Previously retitled as Sacrament. Anyway, I got another copy of this. This one looks interesting. The Man Manitous, the supernatural world of the OJ Boy by Basil Johnston. Bit tanned. Nana Baju. Hey, I got a book called Nana Baju. I might have sold it actually. Nana Buzu. This is Buzu. I could have swear it was Nana Bazu and the other one I had. Tahao, meaning how extraordinary. What kind of being have you brought into the world? Noah's mother was supposed to have exclaimed when she heard her daughter's newborn son talk moments after his birth. <laughs> Within days of giving birth, Winona died and her mother, old Nakamis, had to care for the baby. Except for his ability to talk from birth. The little boy known as Nana Buzu, from his first words, I am Nana Buzu, appeared to be like any other child compared to his brother, Maji Kawis, who was afraid of nothing. Nana Buzu was timid. Everything frightened him. Fleeting shadows, thunder, sudden movement, spiders. I'm going to have to read this book. It looks good. 
apparently I have this book, but this is a great fresh copy. So the copy I have, if it's better, then it's better. But I don't think it can be better because this is basically brand new. Great Lakes Ghost Stories, Haunted Tales, Past and Present. In his travels as a Great Lakes research historian, Wes Olazuski has stumbled across many ghost stories, some rings so true that they can give a cold shiver to even the most experienced shipwreck hunter. I bet. I also apparently have this book, too, but I'm not sure where I have it. It's just out-of-body experiences. Don't remember having it, even though it showed up in my libib, lib, libib, munch. No, that's not munch. That's uh, what's his name? What the hell is that? Gustav Klimt. Herman Melville, Selected Tales and Poems, Reinhardt Edition. You don't find much Herman Melville around, but I don't know if the typey or whatever is in this. I have typey anyway, but The Fiddler, The Lightning Rod, Man, I Am My Chimney. I haven't read much about Melville, although I did read the bio about him and whoever that woman was that he had an affair with who was supposedly the inspiration for Moby Dick or maybe it was his other book. Understanding Crystals, your handbook to using and connecting to crystal energy. I don't believe in the bullshit, but some people do. Experiencing crystal energy. This one looks really good. The Ways of the Lonely Ones by Manly Hall. I may read this on this YouTube channel. Manly P. Hall. I think he was part of the Illuminati, wasn't he? Don't know, but what's this? A hundred pages? This would be a good book to read if someone hasn't already read it. The Ways of the Lonely Ones. Power of Crystal Healing, just the same as that other book, but just a coffee table size one. An old classic, The Inferno by Dante. I don't know why it's this soft hardcover, but it's a nice copy, so couldn't pass it up for 50 cents. Running out of time yet. Got one more book. I think I do have more books, actually. No, maybe these are it. Are these all of them? Yeah, I think these are all of them. Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. Which is a, was a decent movie. I don't know if the book's any good, because I think... King is an awful writer. In the morning, Gage's temperature was almost normal. His cheeks were chapped. I was going to say his cheeks were clapped, but otherwise he was bright-eyed and full of beans. All at once, in the course of a week, it seemed his meaningless gabble had turned into a slew of words. He would imitate almost anything you said. What Ellie wanted him to say was shit. Say shit, Gage, Ellie said over her oatmeal. Shit, Gage, shit, Gage responded agreeably. I mean, just rubbish. But, like I said, I've always liked most of the Stephen King movies. Save for the fucking dullard ones, like what was that one? The gargoyles, or whatever it was called. I didn't like it either, but these were entertaining. Anyway, that's all, bruv. Goodbye.